How's it going YouTube Van Damage here? Um, told you guys I was going to give you a little bit of updates as I go with this build and I've come into one little snag that um, was causing me a little bit of an issue as far as the powering of the unit and basically what it, what it boiled down to was I could power the Raspberry Pi off of a battery bank that I bought for whenever I travel but I'm not going to really need it after, you know, my flight back to the States. So what I'm going to do is wind up using that to power my Raspberry Pi. And basically it is an 8,400 milliamp hour battery pack. And what it has is two USB ports on it. And that's really beneficial to me because uh, what I've found out is that I can actually power both the screen and the Raspberry Pi off of this thing. Uh, now here's the problem I ran into the 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 Raspberry Pi uses a micro USB or mini USB I can't remember what exactly it's called but it uses a very small USB and you know in order to charge it and to run it or not charge it but in order to power it uh, where I ran into the problem was my screen the mo the uh, board for the screen requires a 2.1 by 5.5 adapter this guy uh, but the problem was I couldn't hardwire that to the battery bank and I didn't know how to do it to the I didn't know how to do it from the Raspberry Pi I'm sure pretty sure there's a way to do it but I don't want to get into soldering on the board because I've done that with other projects and that wound up frying it just because my soldering iron wasn't so great so I looked online and what I found was this guy right here any USB adapter that you have, um, basically there are two wires in it, or four wires in it. Um, I can't remember the, the colors, but what I'm looking for is red and green or black and green. <gasps> I'm gonna have to reference this again, excuse me. But basically all I need are those two wires. And so what I'm gonna do is solder the pigtail to the USB adapter, excuse me again. Mm and basically give myself a power supply that I can hook directly up to the power bank. Um, I looked it up online, I found a couple of resources and they all said the same thing that, you know, basically cut the wire, strip the wire, and look for these two specific ones within the uh, cable itself. And it will power anything up to 500 milliamps, or milliamp hours, which if I look the screen up, it doesn't require but that. So, technically I should be good. Fingers crossed. Um, I'll power it up, see what happens. Uh, I'm going to also go in, research it a little bit for the screen. And once I am 100% sure that it will work, then I can use my adapter that I'm building right now. So that's that update. I'll show you what I have whenever I complete it. I'm not going to be able to do a soldering video because I don't have... I, I packed up a lot of stuff, so my camera mount and all that is packed away. But... Give me about 30, 40 minutes and I'll have it done. For you guys, it'll probably be about a transition like that. So be back in a second. Okay guys, about ready to start stripping the wiring and all that stuff, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like inside this cable. Uh, I've ripped away some of the shielding, or all the shielding that was around this. But basically, whenever you open this up, you'll have these four wires looking out at you. You'll have black, red, white, and green. Now, the two wires you're looking for, I was wrong in which ones I said earlier, but you need the red and black wires. That's negative and positive. So these are your power supply. And the white and green, these are your data cables. So whenever you plug in, you know, anything that requires you know, micro USB or whatever it is, and you're actually transferring data, say for like a, uh, like an external hard drive, these are what transfer the data. These two, the white and green right here. And these are the ones that power everything. So I'm gonna strip these down and I'm gonna wire them to my, to my pigtail hole and plug it in and fingers crossed this works. If not, back to the drawing board, and I'm going to figure out a different way to do it. Um, I do have, I believe, some of these without the pigtails on it. So one thing that I'm worried about is the resistance, because these are definitely a lot thicker wire 
than what is inside here. So I want to use this one because it has the pigtails on it, but if I have to, I will unsolder all of this and attach it directly to one of these guys because that could cause an issue with powering with a uh, constant power and all that fun stuff. So let me get to soldering and I will be back in just a second. Okay, I know I said I wasn't going to show you the soldering, but I'm going to just show you the prep that I do for mine. Um, yeah, basically you just circle over each other, wind them together, and uh, set them up. If you, I would suggest investing in one of these things. It's a uh, basically a pair of arms with gator clips on the end. That way you can set your wire and then set it inside these, and it'll hold it exactly where you need it. So this is Ray for soldering. And basically, all I'm going to do is, you know, stretch out a little bit of length right here, touch it to it, hit it with the solder, bam, done. Um, yeah, it's just that easy. So let me get the soldering, and I will show you the after results. Boom. Okay, finally got the soldering done. Um, so I ran into a little bit of a problem whenever I was doing this. Uh, this is the original one that I did. Um, I've got the, uh, oh, what is it called? The heat shrink around it, which is basically long, flimsy rubber type something. If you don't know what this stuff is, it, basically it's like a rubber, rubber sheet that goes over top of the wires. And basically what I did, um, I had a little issue trying to take off, oh, what is it called? Uh, I was having an issue stripping the wire and I accidentally cut it a couple of times trying to do this so I ended up having to get a pair of dykes and just ever so like gently pulling off the plastic outer coating and uh, well, whenever I did that I went and soldered everything and because the wire is so flimsy I wanted to add an extra layer to it so what I'd normally do with this wire is just use this stuff here which goes over, I think this is the 18 gauge wire. It's either the 18 or 20 gauge. I have a couple different types. But basically, this will go over top of it. You heat it up, and it will shrink it down over it, and I usually call that good. Um, but because this is so flimsy, I really wanted to add an extra layer to it just to keep it from moving around and possibly breaking uh, while it's in use, which could cause some a little bit of a issue. And so I did it, and I only added this to it. So I cut it again and still a little warm so i cut it again so i could add that to it and then re-soldered this so that's why it's soldered in two separate places but it's done i uh, just finished it up so yeah when you are done doing this um i can't get it off get out of the jaws you thing damn it ah uh, you're going in my lap. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so when you're done, you will have one continuous strand with a USB on the end, on one end, and a pick and a 2.1 by 5.5 on the other. Now you can do this with any other, you know, size adapters, um, but you know, just make sure you know positive and negative. Uh, normally it's going to be the red and the uh, black wire. Red's going to be positive, black's going to be negative. And, but if you have, say, one of these that doesn't have a pigtail on it, uh, the easiest way to do it, if I'm remembering the ones I've done before that I don't have any of these that are stripped out, so I can't really show you. But if I remember correctly, you will have just this smooth outer part here, negative. And then inside, you'll have a terminal sticking out on the back end. That's going to be the positive. So, you know, you just have to kind of look at what you have, and you'll be able to figure, you should be able to figure it out. But just know that this outside portion here is going to be the negative, the one that you mostly see. And then in here, that's the positive. So I'm going to go hook this up, and I'm going to see what happens. Wish me luck. All right, guys, time for the, uh, the moment of truth. Uh, let's see, Raspberry Pi plugged in, powered on through the battery bank, check. Uh, HDMI cable hooked up to the monitor board, check. And as you can hear that probably staticky sound, speaker plugged in, check. 
and you can see all my uploads up there. Um, all right, um, I went ahead and plugged this into the this guy here because it's a little difficult to do it one-handed, and it falls over again. Whatever, but you can see it's plugged in, turned on. I'm gonna just prop. Yeah, you suck. All right, but as you can see, I've got my cable good, ready to go. Um, yeah, let's find out if it if all that uh son of a monkey. But anyway. Let's go and find out if all of that work paid off. Uh, so like I said, I took apart this USB cable and I'm going to use it as a power supply. Uh, does it work? And yeah, yes, it works. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, using a 2.1 by 5.5 male adapter and hard wiring it onto an old USB cable that I no longer use, I am able to use this battery bank here to power this monitor and the Raspberry Pi. Um, and this, this is awesome. So yeah, if you ever need to power, if you're doing one of these builds and you're using a battery bank that has two outlets so you have you know USB USB whatever but one of them is using this funky thing here you can hardwire that to this yes or you can you know use an adapter like I did or you can directly hardwire the board to it um, so yeah just follow the video listen if you need to do this it's fairly simple and easy um, I'm gonna link below there is a guy on instructables.com I recommend that website they have there are some really creative people on that web, on that uh, site but you know I'm gonna link that guy's channel or that guy's page in my video below that way if you have any questions on this uh, there's some great info in the comments which is why I was able to do this without having any concerns whatsoever um, so I'll link that below that way you can go check him out and yeah this is just another step to the long road of putting this in a box so uh, if you like the video please hit that like button uh, subscribe share comment you know ask away any questions that you have um, and yeah as always have a good one thank you for watching bye